All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up a RAID 1 configuration so we can connect two hard drives to our Raspberry Pi and basically they'll mirror each other. This means we'll be able to lose an entire hard drive due to drive failure and we will have all of our data. Now, if we were doing this on a more powerful computer, we'd also get the added benefit of anytime you were reading, you'd be reading twice as fast. But as I showed in my last video, you reach the bottleneck just from the Raspberry Pi pretty quickly. So a RAID 1 configuration is really not gonna help us out that much. But where it is gonna help us out is it's going to give us redundancy. And so if one of our drives fails, we'll still have all of our data. All right, and so in this video, we're not gonna to go too deep into what different RAID types are. That's gonna be for another tutorial. But when you've got two drives, you basically have two options for RAID configuration, RAID 1 and RAID 0. With RAID 1, the two drives basically act as one drive. Every time you write data to the volume, it writes to both of the drives. This is what's called a mirror. The reason it's a mirror is the two drives are mirroring each other. Then when you read data, it can read data off either one of the drives, which when you're having multiple connections to spinning hard drives is really helpful because the data can be read from either one of the drives, speeding up how quickly you can read data from the drives. However, writing to the drives still takes the exact amount of time because data has to be written to both of them. And then in RAID 1 configuration, since the data is mirrored between the two drives, you can lose an entire drive and the RAID will keep working. This is because all the data is on both the drives. So if you pull one of them out, it still can read and write from the other drive. Then on the opposite side of the spectrum is a RAID 0 configuration. Anytime you're writing data to the drives, it basically splits up all of your files and puts part of them on each of the drives. This means you can get incredible performance with read and write going to a RAID 0 configuration. Because anytime you're writing, you're splitting up the writes to the drives. So all the drives are getting taxed less and less. And so if you were to have 10 drives in a RAID 0 configuration, theoretically, you would get 10 times the performance as you would one drive for long sequential read and writes. However, there's a huge risk with this because all you have to do is lose one of the drives and all the data strewn across the other nine drives is completely useless. I'm not gonna cover it a ton here, but if you're looking to have something like four hard drives hooked up and still have redundancy to lose one of them, look at a RAID 5 configuration. It's gonna be slower, especially on the Raspberry Pi because there's a lot of math involved and the Raspberry Pi is a pretty slow processor but a RAID 5 configuration allows you to lose an entire drive and still keep everything working. And it has similar benefits as RAID 0, where if you keep adding drives to it, the pool actually gets bigger. So you get more and more storage. All right, and so when you're buying the drives, I've got two disclaimers here. In this video, I actually break both of them, but that's okay. If you're using a hard drive, make sure that it's a desktop hard drive meaning that it's got its own independent power supply. The Raspberry Pi can't even handle one spinning hard drive, let alone five. I'll put a link in the description to these drives that I use for backups. They're actually gonna be Amazon affiliate links. I figured out how to do that this weekend. So if you click on one of those links and buy something, it actually supports me. So go ahead and do that. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Yeah! But for this video, I'm actually using two SSDs so I'm just gonna have the Raspberry Pi power them. It's basically just what I had on hand and didn't have to format because the rest of them are being used for backups and well, I like having backups. The next rule to have when you're doing a RAID configuration is make sure all the drives are the same size. So as you can see in this video, I'm actually using a 500 gigabyte and a one terabyte SSD. So it's not gonna make building the RAID impossible, but what it's gonna do is it's going to limit it to the size of the smallest drive. So if you were to have four four terabyte drives and a one one terabyte drive, the RAID is gonna act like all five drives are just one terabyte. And so you're really limiting the amount of storage you can use. So make sure to buy drives of the same size, or if you're using old drives, it's not the end of the world. You're just gonna be limited by the smallest drive in the pool. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is SSH into a Raspberry Pi. If you've not got that set up yet, I'll throw a link in the description. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once you've SSH into your Pi, you're gonna to wanna to install MDADM. I can never say that right. So we're gonna do a sudo app get update to update our package links. This is always just good to run the first time in a day. And then we're just going to install mdadm with a sudo app git install mdadm and say yes. All right, and so once that's run, I'll go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And now we've installed mdadm, and that's what we're gonna be using to set up our RAID configuration. All right, so now that we've installed mdadm, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is format our drives. So go ahead and plug in your drives and we're gonna do a sudo blkid. And we're gonna see that there are these two storage devices and I've got two hard drives plugged in. You're gonna be looking for the SDA, SDB and things like that. The SD stands for storage device. So that's what our file system is calling them as they're plugged in. The MMs are things that the Raspberry Pi is using. That's like the boot folder on the SD card and things like that. So don't mess with those. And so now that we've identified that, we're going to need to format them. So we're going to do a sudo fdisk. And then we're going to give it that path. We'll do the first one, SDA. And we're going to start with a delete for D. And now it's deleted the partition. And so now we're going to do in for a new partition, primary, and then just defaults from here. So inner, inner, and inner. And now it's basically created a Linux partition on that first drive. And so that means we'll be able to set up a RAID on it. And now the changes have not been done yet. So we're going to do W to write it. And now it's actually deleted that partition and created our new one. You're gonna to wanna to do this on every single drive you're gonna be putting in your RAID configuration and make sure to delete all the partitions first. So you might have two partitions, so you might have to run that delete command multiple times. And so I'll just go ahead and do it on the second one real quick. And now we're gonna do SDB for storage device B and delete and then new. All right, and so now all my drives are formatted and have one partition. So I'll just go ahead and clear it to give us some space. And I'll run that blkid command again. So now we can see the drives again. And as we can see, they have lost all that information tied to them, which means the formatting worked. So now we're gonna go ahead and use mdadm to create a software RAID configuration. So basically our Raspberry Pi is gonna be controlling the RAID rather than a dedicated hardware. So it is going to be generally slower, but it's a Raspberry Pi. What were you expecting? So we're gonna run sudo mdadm, and then to create a new RAID, we're just gonna do create. And now we're gonna say where we're gonna create it. The Linux standard is in dev slash md0. So I would recommend doing that. And now we're gonna pass it the level. This is the RAID level. So we're gonna do dash dash level equals. And for this configuration, I'm doing RAID one. You could also do RAID zero if you've got only two drives. I would not recommend doing that. And if you got something like three or four drives, you can do a RAID five configuration. But I'll let you research which RAID configuration you want. It's basically always a tie between performance, capacity, and redundancy. So I'm doing level one. And now we're gonna give it the number of RAID devices. So we're gonna do dash edge RAID devices. And here is where you just say how many RAID devices you're gonna have, i.e. how many hard drives are gonna be in this RAID. So I've got two, so two. And now we're just gonna tell it which drives to use. So we're gonna do just dev SDA1 and just dev SDB1. And just go ahead and hit enter. And see, it's giving me this error right here because it's saying, wait, 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 you've got two very different size drives. Well, I need that getting into it, so I'm just gonna say yes. 
All right, and so now it's basically written on the drives that, hey, I'm part of this software raid. That actually means I could take these two drives out, plug them into a Linux machine and boot it up, and it most likely would still register them as a software raid. It's actually pretty cool. But don't try that at home unless you really know what you're doing, especially if you've got critical data on there. All right, so now let's make sure it worked by doing a sudo blkid. And so we can see right here that both SDA and SDB are part of this RAID member, which means it's worked. And so now we need to format this RAID into a EXT file system. And so I'll just clear it to give us some space here. And we're going to do a sudo make file system and dash type is going to be ext4. And the location is going to be dev slash md0, which is what we created. All right, so now that we've created the ext file system on there, we want to make sure that this raid survives reboots, obviously. And so right now there's two different things that we've got to do. We've got to make sure that a reboot, it knows it's a raid, and that the Raspberry Pi knows where to mount it on a reboot. For keeping the RAID persistent, MDADM has done an awesome job here, although we do have to go to sudo su to act as a root user because this command is going to be piping data from one protected area to another protected area, and so it's a lot easier to run this just as root. So by typing sudo su, we are now a super user, we are the root user, and so everything we do is basically like we typed sudo in front of it. Be careful, do not stay in this mode very long because you could accidentally completely brick your Raspberry Pi by typing the wrong command. And so all we're gonna have to do here is take the output of the details command from mdadm and put it in mdadm's config file. So to do that, we're gonna type mdadm slash slash detail slash slash scan. And then we're going to do a pipe so this will basically send the output of this command. Instead of going to the terminal, it's going to go to the file we're about to specify, which is in backslash etc, mdadm, slash mdadm.config, and just hit enter. And so we'll just really quickly delete this last part to see what it printed. So basically what it did was it said what the array was, the metadata, the name, and the UUID. Basically, it put that all into the config file in the proper format, so that way, whenever we boot up and attach these drives, it will know that these are in a RAID configuration. It's a really easy way of doing it. And so now, before you do anything else, you exit to get back to our regular user so we don't mess anything up on accident. All right, and so now that that's done, we'll go ahead and clear it to give us some space. All right, so right now, we've made sure that our RAID is persistent, but we've not made sure that the mounting happens on boot up. Basically, right now, these disks exist as a RAID, but nobody's mounted them, and so they're not usable right now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a place to mount it. So I'm gonna do a sudo mkdir, and we're just going to create a directory slash raid. And so now if we do a CD to the root directory and an LS, and so we can see right here that we've created this raid folder. And so that's where we're going to be mounting this raid one configuration. All right, and so to do this, we're going to do a proper fstab mount. By proper, I mean we're actually gonna be using the UUID of the raid rather than just saying it's mounting location. It's the better way to do this. So first we gotta figure out what the UUID is by typing lsblk, sudo lsblk. Whoops, I meant blkid. And we're gonna see down here that this dev md0, that raid configuration we created, has a UUID of this. And so if you're on a Mac, you can do Command-C to copy that, which makes this a lot easier. 
Unfortunately, if you're on PC, you can't really copy and paste within terminal because control C is the kill command. And so you're gonna have to figure out another way to do that. So I've gone ahead and copied this UUID. And so now we're gonna do a sudo nano etc slash fstab to edit our fstab config file. And all we're gonna do here is go to the end of this line and we're going to create a new line. Basically the fstab folder tells your Raspberry Pi what drives to boot and how on a reboot. And so we're gonna say UUID equals in that value. And so our Raspberry Pi is gonna look for this UUID. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to mount it to whatever location we say here, which is slash raid. And then you tell it what the format is. And so it's an ext4 drive, so ext4. And we're just gonna do defaults for the permissions and then zero, zero. And so now we're gonna go ahead and save it and we're gonna do control X to exit, Y to save it, enter to write it. And so now to test and see if that mounting worked, we're going to do a sudo mount dash A to mount everything from the F stab. All right, and so now let's see if that worked. So we're gonna type sudo lsblk and we're gonna see right here that on SDA and SDB, there is this MD0, which is that RAID we configured, and it is mounted in slash RAID. All right, and so that means every time a Raspberry Pi reboots, this will get mounted to the slash RAID folder. Another thing to note, if you look at SDA, it is 930 gigs but the MD0 partition of it, that RAID partition, is only 465 gigs. That's because the SDB is only 465 gigs. That's why I was saying earlier, with any RAID configuration you choose, the RAID will act as if every single drive is the size of the smallest drive. So sometimes you can add a drive and it will actually make your storage pool smaller if you're doing something like a RAID 5 configuration and you've got a bunch of four terabyte drives and you try to add in a one terabyte drive, it will go, oh, these are all now just one terabyte. So check what you're doing there. One thing I did want to add, if you are going to be doing a RAID 5 configuration, be ready for very slow transfer speeds because the Raspberry Pi has got to do a lot of math to create a RAID 5 array. If you want still relatively decent performance with redundancy and bigger drives, look at RAID 10. All right, and so now the final part of this is making sure we can write to it, because right now we're not gonna be able to. So we're going to CD into the slash RAID folder, and we're going to try to write to it. And as we can see here, I tried to write a file called test in there, and it said permission denied. That's because right now the root is the owner of this. So we're gonna change that by doing a sudo chmod dash r for recursive 777 and a period to do it in place and just hit enter. And now we'll try that same touch test and voila, there you go. Now as the final thing to check, let's just go ahead and reboot this and make sure it all worked. So we'll do a sudo reboot. All right, so now one reboot later, let's see if that test file is still mounted there. And so now we're going to go back to that RAID folder and moment of truth, ls, and what do you know? The test file is still there, meaning that everything worked out correctly. All right, well that's it for the tutorial on how to set up a software RAID on your Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and put in the comments below any other tutorials you'd like to see me make and have a good one, bye.